Yeah, this part sucked. And then maybe we'll stomp on it and we can drape it around you and you can roll around a little bit. Hey guys, Lucas here from Future Surplus, and today we're going to do part one of three on building a camo net. So, let's go into what we're going to be doing. So, in this video we're going to go over building the basics of your camo net, and what that looks like, how to do it, and then the next video we'll go over vegging it out, and then the next video after that we'll go over some testing. So today, again, we're going to learn how to build a camo net that is a good base for a lot of applications. So, what does this do for you? Well, prime application you're going to see a lot of is in a ghillie suit. So, this will be on a ghillie suit. Um, we're not going to go over how to make a ghillie suit itself, but this is something that you'll see on a ghillie suit at the end of the day. Um, other than that, mostly military applications as far as you can make pack covers, you can make covers for your different parts of your gear, for your weapon, for all sorts of things. Uh, larger ones of these are even just about this size. You can use to position improvement. So you can cover up equipment on your, in your position if you're an OP or high sight, something like that. Or, you know, just in general, improve where you're at. Add a layer of concealment and camouflage to that and just be better off in general. So that's the main military applications for this. Um, and I'd say if you're gonna build one of these, you know, pack covers and for positions and equipment, this is a great use for a net like this. This does have some civilian applications as well. So if you are really into hunting, um, there are some people that make these out for hunting, for blinds, tree stands, even some still hunting. Um, you'll see guys that go kind of all out like this. And then if you're a wildlife photographer, you'll see some instances of camo nets as well, where you can really get in there you're gonna be there for a few days kind of watching over a site and looking for particular animals. And you can use this to just enhance your overall position and kind of blend better into the environment. So it has a bunch of applications along with just being cool. So, you know, if you really just, it's just cool to make at the end of the day. Um, once you make it out, once you really learn what you're doing, um, something to take pride in and you can understand why the guys that make these really do take a lot of pride in making these because it's a very time intensive process. And I'm gonna say that probably about a thousand other times during this this is time intensive it's not fast and there's no fast way about this so lots of good uses and if you're airsoft mill sim you know if you're going crazy you can make one of these out too so before we get into building it let's talk about my experience with these so i was while i was in the army i was a forward observer um i was never a scout sniper so with military application wise i never made a ghillie suit um i did mess a lot with concealment and position improvement along with natural vegetation um, but as a forward observer our engagement distance was dramatically longer and further than any sniper is really going to engage with a rifle. So we didn't really need this level of concealment, but I do have, you know, quite a bit of experience with concealment. Um, aside from that, just in general, building little kind of bits of this um, is something I do enjoy, but never a full on camo net. So what did I do in order to be able to teach this? Um, I started building one and I started doing what you're doing right now, which is watching videos. Um, but first off, I just started building one, and I really, really messed it up. And then I was like, okay, this is a lot harder than it looks, um, you know, just off my baseline level of knowledge. So I reached out to some buddies. Um, one of them in particular, it was a scout sniper in the U.S. Army for a long time. So used him as a good base of knowledge, and he really, really, really walked me through this. And it's gotten me a point where um, I'm able to, able to teach this at the end of the day. And so it's taken a while, and it's taken a lot of screw-ups on my part. But at the end of the day, I think you'll learn that there's a lot of ways to improve and this is an ongoing process. Um, you're only going to get better as you make more of these and use them more. And the biggest thing about this is if you don't use it, it doesn't matter how good you do this because you're not going to be as good as you could be with it. So that's my experience over with this as well as watching a bunch of videos just like this. And I'm taking from them what I would have liked to see more of, uh, what I think they can do better of and kind of, there's a lot of things out there that are at the end of the day, very few videos, are really talking about right and a lot of videos are talking about wrong and i think hopefully i can you know show some of that here and i'm really get you down to building this so you can use one because it's pretty awesome building out so let's get into building your camo net okay so to, before we really start getting into building this let's go over real quick what this does for you and what it doesn't do for you 
So first off, what does this do for you? It adds a layer of really good concealment that is tailored to your natural environment that you're operating in. So if you are using this on your position, you can cover gear up, cover parts of your hide sight, your OP, um, everything like that, really well up, get rid of some gaps in coverage. And then also, you know, this is see throughout the end of the day, so you can have some spots to kind of still observe out of. And then, so it's really just baseline concealment. What this doesn't do for you though, is make you visible if you're not trying already. So this can hide you all day long from anyone that's looking at you for the most part, but it's not gonna make you invisible if you're not trying in the first place. So if you make this, you can do a really, really good job, but if you're not doing a good job hiding in the first place, this isn't gonna do crap for you. So remember that this is, an, uh, this is a tool to aid you in concealment. This is not the answer to concealment. So before you get too far in, that's what it does and doesn't for, do for you. So let's talk about building this out now. We're finally here. Okay, so what is the base of our camo net? The base is just some fish netting we're using right now. This is a pretty typical um, fish net that you're going to see used in a lot of handmade ones. You can use some other types of bases, uh, mainly for like a ghillie suit application. You would see guys um, tacking on by bar tacking and shoe going on like 550 cord for some homemade ones, and that works really great too. You can get a really wide kind of uh, netting pattern on your coat and your pants. You can also use some other netting types, but this kind of fish net is pretty typical, pretty common. There's a few good reasons for that. Uh, we do sell this, as again, you're watching a store channel. Um, this is just fish net, and it's made of a natural material. Not sure what kind of natural material, to be honest with you, but um, it's got a natural, neutral color. It doesn't shine, which is a huge thing. You don't want your base to shine as it is. You want it to have that natural color. I know the sun's hitting it, it's kind of shining, but as it is, it doesn't shine. Um, so that natural, neutral color as a base works really well, and it's gonna take on the natural, neutral colors of your environment as you wash it out and use it more and more. So your base, being this fishnet, that's what you're using to tie everything onto and um, from there. Now, one thing about this fishnet, anything, anything netting-wise you're using, if you're not tacking this onto a ghillie suit, this is gonna catch on every little freaking thing. So if you're using this to drape over gear, drape over your equipment, um, on your position, just tying it off, anything that gets in here, it's gonna get stuck in here. So remember that going forward. And um, later on, next video, we'll show kind of how this looks really attached to some gear and uh, what you kind of looking for when you're doing that, if you're gonna do that yourself. And um, how just putting a thin thin piece of like camo fabric behind here does you a lot of good if you're gonna use a drape over gear. So this is your base of your camo net. It's just some fish netting. So other materials we'll need is jute. So what is jute? Jute is just the strings from burlap sacks. It's a natural fiber. And that is great because it's natural. It starts off with a natural neutral color and it's going to take on um, the natural environment as you use it, which is a great thing because you want to match where you're at. You don't want to just use, you know, white thread and dye it and see what happens. Um, you're going to go better off using jute. And there are a few alternatives to jute. You can get just because um, you make jute from burlap sack. So we're going to show real quick in a minute here how to do that. Um, but other than that, you can buy burlap string and kind of de-thread it. A little bit kind of save yourself some time or you can go with some other alternatives but at the end of the day this natural jute is the best way to do it um because it's just I don't know, it's just the best way to do it at the end of the day you're not you don't have to worry about shine and your any dyes having a really bad ir signature um it's good under thermals good under night vision as it is and you can do a lot with it you can dye it yourself it's just the best base so let's take a look how to make your jute from a burlap sack real quick so you get an idea uh, what you're going to need to do there. Okay, so we're going to look at how we get jute from these burlap sacks and um, some tips and tricks, maybe not tips and tricks, but just some good things I've found from doing this that like, makes my life a little easier. So first off, you kind of see the section I'm working off of here in your size. Um, so about a foot, a little over a foot length, and then um, as far as this length goes, and then this length right here is pretty good too. So I just quartered a burlap sack, um, and I left a seam on every edge of the sections I was working off of, and that seam helps when I'm pulling it out. It keeps the, the length of it kind of steady, and I'm not having to work against anything or constantly readjust how the sack is sitting. Um, so leaving a seam there, I found has helped me a lot. So to get it out of there and to pull it, it's fairly easy. Um, kind of just grab, I've been putting on my knee, kind of put my arm down, and then I'll grab a couple strands like this. If you can see that, and then I'll just pull those out. So sometimes I get a little caught, of course, as I'm doing this, they do, but you get the idea. Um, once you get kind of the ball rolling, it gets a lot easier. And um, once you get your kind of setup set up, 
it gets pretty easy. Um, normally I'm sitting in a chair for this, so I put them on my leg and I kind of keep them all together. Um, that way it's, everything stays pretty uniform, not having to work against myself. But a couple strands at a time, two to three is usually what I found max has worked for me. I know some guys grab whole fistfuls and will pull them out. Just whatever, whatever works for you best. This is tedious. Is The whole process of building this net is going to be very tedious for you. So if you're on a deadline, find a buddy to help you out. Or don't work on a deadline. Just do a little bit every night because this takes some time. And as far as the amount of burlap sacks you're going to need, we'll go over that later. But you'll see that you need a lot of burlap. So you can buy this by a yard at some places, some like craft stores, Walmart, wherever it may be. And you can do it by a yard or you can get burlap sacks, cut them out. That's what I've been doing. And I've, I think that works best for me as it is. And um, you're going to need a lot of burlap. And that, again, this is the most time consuming part. But that's how you do it. This I've found the easiest for me. So let's go over how to put this onto the net. And I'll take a look at that as well. Okay, so what you're going to end up with after you pull apart your burlap sacks or burlap fabric, whatever it is, is getting jute and you're going to get a bunch of this. Um, so this is just an example of part of like, this is about uh, half of one of those quarters I cut out. This is what you end up with. So not a whole lot. So again, you have to do quite a bit. So you got that. So, okay, so for that fistful of jute I had, you're going to start pulling out strands to apply to your camo net. Now, as far as how thick and thin you want them, this is about as thin as you want. It's about a piece of 550 cord in diameter or thickness. And about a finger of uh, thickness is about as thick as you want it to get, really. So this is kind of what you're working with as far as how big you want those strands to be once you put them on there. Any bigger, any thinner, um, bigger is going to be too much. It's just going to get too bulky. Any thinner, it's really just, you know, you're just wasting your time at that point. So let's see how we're going to put this onto the netting. So you're going to half that piece. So again, when I have that like foot long-ish piece, you're having it. Taking it just like that, and you're going to put it through the fishnet to loop it through. So on your section, wherever you are going to do in that, and we'll go over the rest of the video, how you kind of want to spread this out. It's just putting on there, looping it through itself on that netting and boom. And you kind of spread it out if you need to right now, or you can wait till you're kind of fully complete. So that's as easy as it is to put it on there. So again, it's going to take a lot because you see how little this really takes up. So you're going to do a lot, a lot, a lot of jute off those burlap sacks, burlap fabric, whatever you're working off of to complete this camo net. So yeah, we'll go from there. So that's how you make your jute. Um, let's go over the length again real quick. Kind of went over in that little clip, but um, it's better going the error on the side of error and go a little long because you can always trim it at the end of the day. So instead of going real short and having to redo it, just go a little longer, see how that does for you. If, it, if it's too long, you can just trim it up some rather than having to redo it. Because once this is on here and you do a ghillie wash, which we'll go over in a few, um, this is going to get real tight on there and it's just a pain to take off if you put it on there properly. So go longer and then go from there. Um, we're going to take a look at density in a second as well and get a good example, show you what the density should look like and you know what, what is wrong and then what is mostly right. I'm a little heavy in some areas on here, I'm a little light in a couple other areas, but in the, the day, overall density on this piece of camo netting is fairly consistent and fairly good. Um, but I'll show you what's really wrong, but yeah. So like right here, if I had this up, that'd be too light. Down here, that's not too bad. But we'll show you what's too heavy in a second. So after you're doing your jute and you got plenty of jute, you're gonna need, I think this, I really just went maximum efficiency on my burlap sacks for this one. And I think it took about two and a half to get this camo net kind of juted out. So you're gonna need a lot of jute. It's gonna take a minute. It's, you know, if you buy some just jute cord, it might be a little faster. But at the end of the day, making yourself most fulfillment out of that, most pride, it's going to take about two and a half to three burlap sacks, depending on your size of your piece of netting. And for your ghillie suit, same kind of deal. From there, um, you're going to need some 550 cord. Now you're going to need tons and tons and tons of 550 cord. And you want to cut that. It's about 12, 18 inches, maybe a little shorter. Um, but you want plenty to tie down on something with. So how much 550 cord are you going to need? All of it. Um, what I've kind of found is... At a minimum, uh, three to one ratio of 550 cord to jute is what's working out best for me. And even then, I'm still sometimes not having enough 550 cord on here when I'm vegging it out. So three to one to start off with and just have a bunch of extra on you to kind of fill in those gaps. Because you're going to go through here and you're going to realize I left a big old gap right here or something like that where there's nothing to tie off with. Because the worst thing you're going to do is get out there, use this in some sort of environment and realize, man, this whole gap's giving me away. So the more the merrier, and it's going to do something similar to the jute, 
where it's going to help break up the outline. So, yep, that's 550 cord. Just plenty of it. Also, fuse it before we put it on here. I did not do this on this example. Um, I kind of just forgot, to be honest with you. But definitely fuse it before we put it on here because it's going to fray like this one's already starting to. And if you fuse it on here, you run a big risk because jute is extremely flammable. So if you fuse this, it drips, the spark goes, whatever happens, um, you have an extremely flammable piece of gear right here. So there are some ways you can mitigate that. You can put some fire resistant uh, chemicals on there and help this jute. It's not going to shine really heavy because of that, but help this jute be a little more, uh, not such a hazard when you're wearing it or using it on your gear or putting on your ghillie suit, whatever it need, needs to be. Um, from there, what can you do in addition to your 550 cord and jute? Um, you can have some scrim in here. You can tie your scrim off and kind of work the way the 550 cord and jute is, or you can kind of weave it through, especially if you're in this position. Just help up break up some of those gaps, help break the overall appearance that's up a little better, and add some depth to it with this putting scrim on there. In place, or in addition to 550 cord, I wouldn't use it in place of it. You can use hair ties, some natural colored hair ties. Um, putting those on there, you can use those really great for attaching uh, vegetation. But veg those hair ties will dry out, crack out, and just kind of break down over time. So if you do use those, make sure you carry extra with you. Because at the end of the day, using those out in the field, they're going to break down and you know go to crap on you. So make sure you bring some extra if you go that route to use them in addition to your 550 cord, but not in place. Now... Um, so that's covering pretty much how to build this. Um, it's a pretty simple overall process, but it is time consuming and it is very um, meticulous at the end of the day. And it's trial and error too. So if you're doing this by yourself, I'd recommend you start off, build it, take a good look at it, um, Google some images, take a look at if you have buddies I've done it too elsewhere, um, if you anybody to talk to as well. Look at it and go from there. Um, that's what really helped me out is building it, messing up, sending a few pictures, talking to a buddy about it, and him correcting me. And um, I know not everybody has that kind of advantage. I mean, if you're in the military in a scout cyber section, you have a big advantage there. But, um, you know, this is, it's a labor-intensive process. And the reason is, the more labor put into it, the more time and more effort, the better it's going to turn out. So if you skimp on something, it's going to show later on in the day. Now, let's take a look at, let's, let's take a look at density real quick. And then we're going to go into ghillie wash, which is a really important process for these nettings, um, for whatever gear you're going to put it on. And then we're also going to look at some stuff you can apply this to just real quick. And then we're going to go over, well, change that up. We're going to go over density real quick. We're going to take a look at two things you can put this on um, really easy. And then we're going to go over ghillie wash, why that's important. And then we're going to go over maintenance. So let's take a look at density real quick. Okay, so looking at density. Now, when you're putting this on here, it's going to overlap. So make sure you take that into uh, factor when you're applying this you're gonna have some overlap so it is going to add to your density as you just go on so i've started from i usually um, what i found best is start from the bottom work your way up if you have a camo net big piece like this hang it up work from the bottom go up that we can see it best now some of these areas are a little heavy some of them are a little light but overall this is a pretty good density at the end of the day for your jute um, when this uh, spreads out a little bit the more you use it it's going to look fill in some of those gaps, but still be good enough that it can collapse on itself. But density wise, this is about, this is about good. Um, let's look at what's too dense and why it's too dense and you know, just why to avoid that. So this corner over here, way, way, way too dense. Um, I mean, I could hide my hand just under jute here. This is your Hollywood kind of ghillie suit. Um, doing this makes you look like a big flat bush or stomped piece of grass that's dead and everything like that and when you add vegetation to it it's going to bulk out really really badly so doing this is not the way to do it um a it doesn't work anywhere near as well there's very very limited application for something this dense very limited so if you're going this dense and you start looking at it and you start looking like a wookie um know you're doing a hollywood style and know you're doing it wrong and you start piecing that out breaking it up and you know, thinning that out. So before you get too far. So don't do this, because even if you're 550 all, all day long in there, the moment you add vegetation, it's gonna bulk out super hard and you're gonna look like a big old walking bush that looks out of place. So hopefully that is a good explanation on density, what's too heavy, what kind of looks good, and what's gonna do you well at the end of the day once you start vegging this out. Um, 
this is your Amazon special. You know, if you buy an Amazon special ghillie suit or if you're able to find a ghillie suit under $400, it's going to be this and it's not going to work. That's really end of the day what it's going to be. So if you're looking to just buy one that's already built out and ready for you to add vegetation to, it's under 400 bucks. It's going to be like this and it's not going to be right. It's going to be a Halloween costume at the end of the day um, and not something you really want to use. So that's density. And hopefully that that is something that I had a really hard time with is density when I was building this out is just kind of keeping a good eye on what I was doing because it's very, very, very easy to go too dense. Because you're like, man, there's a gap right there. Crap. But then you look at it and you're like, well, there's some overlap if this swings this way. But if I put veg right here, it's going to fill in that gap. All those kind of things. So think about that when you're applying your jute because, like I said before, the jute is not the suit. It's not your camo net. It is part of it and it is the base of it, but it's not what makes up um, the concealment factor. It just adds to it all. Your vegetation is what's going to really conceal you. So, you know, put a piece of 550 cord here if you really feel like you have a big gap that we can fill it in later on. Um, yeah, but that's density. That's a quick overlook. Here's what not to do. Again, if you're going this too heavy, going he this heavy, or you're building it out, or you're looking at an example that's like this, it is too heavy, and you're going to stand out at the end of the day. Um, most of the time, the photographs of people wearing this dense of a um, ghillie suit or using a camo net that dense, um, probably some camera tricks going on. Um, it's just too heavy. So yeah, from here, let's look at two examples of some clothing you can put this on and um, how you can kind of take a look at that and um, kind of an idea of what we're going to do in the next video as well. So yeah, let's go from there. All right, so here's a boonie cap that I've uh, done a little bit to. Um, added a piece of this netting on top. It got cut out in size. Well, I didn't add it. My buddy did it. Um, but you cut out a piece of this camo netting, put tied on top, and then went from there. And you can tie some jute there, tie some 550. And once this is broken in well, this one's had that light gilly wash, nothing too wild. Um, not nearly enough to really good use in the field environment. But um, you can start applying vegetation to this, and this as itself is going to help break up your outline. Because if you're using this on a piece of clothing, on a ghillie suit, what that ghillie suit really does for you is break up your head and shoulders. So... Um, from here, you would add a veil on the front and back to help really, really break up your shoulders. So this boonie cap is a good base, and you can wear it as is, and it's going to do something for you. But, you know, this is just step one of a ghillie suit, which has a really, there's a lot of things going to ghillie suit. That's why we're not doing it, because I need to make one before I do a video on it. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, what you're doing the day, if you're going to apply this to your clothing, um, this is how kind of the base of a boonie hat will look. So let's look at a piece of clothing that's on. Um, I have half of a cobra hood here that I've kind of made out. Um, but I got that on there, just the same thing as this. And I've started applying vegetation, um, which vegging out is really, really hard. Um, and it's definitely the most skill is going to go into veg vegging it out. So it's just an example of what kind of vegging looks like. Um, it can definitely be better than this. Um, but in the next video, we'll go over out vegging out. Kind of some tips, tricks, things to look at for that. But again, I just, there's pretty much this is on the base of the back and going over the shoulders. And that's what it looks like at the end of the day. Um, kind of what your camo nut can look like. You're putting it over gear, draping over it, and just in general, breaking up your outline. Because what this is going to do for you is going to break up your outline. It's not going to make you invisible as it is. It's going to help break up what you look like. And on a ghillie suit, like I was saying earlier, it is breaking up the head and shoulders, which are extremely visible parts of the human body and what we recognize with our eyes pretty much immediately. So when you can break that up, it's just gonna break you up when you're looking at, if somebody's looking at you, it's gonna be harder to see you. So from here, let's go into a ghillie wash and what that looks like and how you can do it in your backyard um, and how you can get the effects of really rolling around. And we'll talk about maintenance too. All right, so now we're gonna talk about ghillie wash, uh, how to do it in your backyard and why it's important. Let me go turn those hose off and we'll get to talking. All right, so what is a ghillie wash? Well, it's essentially breaking in your camo net, or if you have this on a ghillie suit, breaking your ghillie suit. And what that does is you're gonna to wanna to get this thing wet and then ground similar to where you're at. So um, soaking it, like if you see any movies where you know you got snipers and ghillie suits that roll around the river, roll around the dirt and everything like that, it's essentially a ghillie wash. Um, what they're doing is soaking that burlap down, even your 550 cord and the netting itself and just breaking it in and getting some natural coloration stained into it. So um, from there, 
you know, get this thing if in, in your backyard where it's going to be easiest for you to do most likely is just find a good patch of ground. You don't mind getting muddy and broken up. Soak that piece of ground through a camo net on top of it, whatever piece you're working with. If you got a piece on clothing or it may be, and just start working this thing in the ground. Um, stop, you know, grind it in there. If it's uh, on clothing and you can wear it, wear it, roll around, get real dirty in it, and let that thing take up that natural coloration. Um, just start dyeing your burlap. So, because once you do that, it's going to assume those colors real well. And that's what you want. Because as nice of a color natural burlap is, you know, you want it to match your environment. So that ghillie wash is really important at the end of the day. And make sure you do a good job. So do a ghillie wash. You know, take your time. Get it ground in there. Rinse it out and repeat. Rinse it out, repeat. Let it dry, repeat. Um, some things that will come from that is you'll work out all of your loose ends on your jute. So anything that's loose or it's going to break off is going to go ahead and break off. And it's also probably going to dread up. So when you're using like jute like this, it's going to, especially once it dries up, it's going to dread. And once it dries up, you want to get through there and break it up a little bit. Um, you can take a wire brush. You can take fingers. Um, the bigger piece of netting you have, the more longer it's going to take. But just break that up a little bit and get it so it's not just dreaded out because you don't want it just as thick, big old strands. You want this to spread out at the end of the day. Once you get real broken and you start using it, that would actually does something for you and not just looks like a floppy piece of dead grass. So ghillie suits are or the ghillie wash is really important and it applies to just a camo net that you're going to use on a piece of clothing for a ghillie suit or on your equipment to cover position up, whatever need be. Um, it is an important step of that. So next let's talk about maintenance and your ghillie wash kind of shows some of the maintenance things you're going to have to get into. Anything that's not tied down tight or is natural and it's going to break up, it's going to come off at a certain point. So just like that ghillie wash is going to break up the burlap and you're going to lose a few strands and then thin out what you got on there. Um, using it's going to do the same thing, especially if it's on a suit and you know dragging that thing through the mud and the dirt. If you're crawling around, skull dragging, even if you're low crawl getting crawled on, caught on bushes and stuff, you're going to start ripping out jute, um, get some real thin strands, your 550 cord will start to break down after a certain point, especially if it's caught on something sharp, like rocks or whatnot. And um, if you use scrim, scrim's gonna start tearing up too. And then if you have hair ties on there to help hold vegetation, those are gonna break up as well. So your maintenance portion is, you know, if, if you use this, go out there in an environment and it sits out there for a couple days, um, when you get back, you have to look over it, just like your kit, just like your body, just like your clothing, um, your vehicle, your weapon, anything like that. You're gonna take a look at it see what's going on, see what broke down, and um, if you need to reapply anything on there. So maintenance is an important part, because if you just use this, you know, it's, it's not gonna work for you if you just go through it and don't ever maintain it. So ghillie wash is that last part, building your base. So build your base up, um, and then give it a good wash, and then get ready for our next video, we're gonna cover veg vegging it out. So vegging it out is gonna be about as in-depth a process, um, and that is definitely where your skill really comes into play. So um, make sure to go outside, take a look at how things look. Um, the biggest thing you can do in preparation for when we go over vegging it out, take a look at how things look and take a look at how things are going to look if they moved and things like that. So, um, yeah, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment below. Um, one thing I do want to ask if you've made it this far and you're somebody that's really experienced in this, um, please leave a comment if I messed up anything up. Um, I don't want to put bad information out there. Um, but so if I mess anything up, you got tips, tricks, um, in like that for somebody that's watching this really wants to learn, please leave a comment below and let people know what's going on because, again, the last thing I want to do is put out bad info and all that. If you got anything for me to, to say, please go ahead and say that, good or bad. Um, and everything helps in the day. So subscribe, stay tuned for the next portion, and, you know, just if you're going to build one of these out, good luck.